All right, so welcome to the All This Math daily IG Live installment. Today, we're going to talk a little bit of trigonometry. We're going to talk about some Soka Toa. All right. Now, many of us, now when I say Soka Toa, what am I talking about? I'm talking about this acronym, that's the SO, this acronym, that's the CA, and this acronym, that's the TOA. All right. Now, each of those letters stands for a very important word that we're going to use when we work out problem number one, problem number two, and problem number three right here. All right? Now, I'm going to get into that once I actually start working through the problems. All right? Now, number one, we have what's called a right triangle. Now, a lot of times when you sit in class and your teachers throw out mathematical terms and different jargon, you may not know what the terms mean. Please do not hesitate to raise your hand in class. All right? Even if you're in a Zoom meeting, raise your hand on Zoom, and say, what does that term mean? Politely and respectfully say, what does that term mean? Can you define that term? Because a lot of times we as math teachers, I know I've been guilty of it in the past, we throw terms out there and we take for granted the fact that those that we are speaking to may not know what we're talking about, all right? So when I say right triangle, what does that mean? A right triangle, well, we know a triangle is a polygon, right, that has three sides, one, two, three. The prefix tri means three. Now, a right triangle is a specific type of triangle that has a right angle. Now, what is a right angle? A right angle is an angle that if you took out a protractor and measured it, meaning the space in between this line segment and that line segment, or this leg and that leg, would measure 90 degrees. Now, when I say degrees, I'm not talking about temperature. I'm talking about the measure of an angle. We also use degrees to measure angles, okay? So, if a triangle has a 90 degree angle, it is called a right triangle. That's a specific type of triangle. There are other types of triangles, right? You have isosceles triangles. You have scalene triangles. And we can get into the definitions of those at another time. But right now, today's lesson is all about right triangles and how we figure out missing information from right triangles. Because these up here that we're going to work with today are called trigonometric ratios. And they only work for right triangles, all right? So I have a right triangle right here. And the name of this triangle is triangle ABC. I mean, if you want to be different and weird, you can call it triangle CBA if you want to. That's up to you. That's not going to really make a difference. But I'm going to call it triangle ABC, okay? It's got three points, point A, point B, and point C. Each of these points is a vertex. A vertex is where two legs of a triangle or two legs or two sides of any polygon meet up, all right? Now, this says... A, B. This represents segment A, B or leg A, B, which goes from point A to point B. And there's an equal sign and a blank space. So what does that tell me? That tells me that I want to know, let me use a different color. I want to know the length of this side of this triangle right here. That's what I want to figure out. All right. Now, the next thing I need to know is how to do it. All right. Because now I know what to do. But now I need to figure out how to do it. So the way we do it is we look at the information that we know about this triangle. We know that this triangle has a 90 degree angle. We also know that this triangle has a 61 degree angle. If, in case you can't see that, that says 61 degrees. So that means that the measure of this angle between this leg and this leg is 61 degrees. We also know that this triangle also has a side that's 15 units long. All right? So now what we do is when we deal with trigonometric ratios or trig ratios, a.k.a. trig ratios, what we do is we look at the angle that we have or one of the angles that we have. We don't use the 90 degree angle. That's one thing you should put in your notes. We don't use the 90 degree angle. We use one of the other two angles. So if we're not going to use the 90 degree angle, that means I either need to use this angle or that angle. Now, it just so happens that I don't know the measure of this angle already. I could figure it out, but that's extra work that I don't need to do. I'm given this angle right here is 61 degrees. So I'm gonna use this angle. Now, the next question we have to ask ourselves is, in relation to this angle, what information am I looking for and what information do I know? I know that in relation to this angle, I know the length of the opposite side. This is the opposite side, right? I also know that I'm looking for the length of this side. And this side is called my adjacent side, adjacent like next to, just like when you're sitting next to somebody, right? Which we're not really doing a whole lot of these days because we're social distancing, but that's cool. But adjacent means next to, 
right? So this side is adjacent to this angle. Now, somebody watching this video should be thinking, well, what about this side? Isn't this side adjacent to that angle also? Technically, yes, you're right. But that's not considered the adjacent side. And this is why. Because this side is across from the 90 degree angle. And this side has a special name, which is the hypotenuse. So we call this the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse. So basically, when we deal with right triangles and we deal with trig ratios, our triangles are broken down like this. They have two legs and one hypotenuse. Two legs, one, two, and a hypotenuse. The hypotenuse can never be considered the adjacent side. It's the other side that's the adjacent side. So you got the 61 degree angle. It's technically adjacent to this side and this side. But if this side is already the hypotenuse, then it's not the adjacent side. So we deal with, we consider this to be the adjacent side. All right? So now, back to what I was saying. Compared to, in, in relation to this angle, what do I know? I know that I'm looking for the adjacent side and I know the opposite side. So that means we're looking for a trig ratio. We go back to the Sokotoa part. We're looking for a trig ratio that deals with the adjacent side and the opposite side. Now, A stands for adjacent. And O stands for opposite. Hmm. So I know I got a ratio. I got a ratio with opposite and adjacent in it. What does this T stand for? This T stands for the word tangent, right? T stands for the word tangent. So that means that I'm going to use the tangent function, right, to figure out what the length of this side is. So that means what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up an equation. So that means that I have the tangent, T-A-N is the abbreviation for tangent, of 61 degrees is going to be equal to the opposite side, which is 15, divided by the A, the adjacent side, which is AB. So I'm going to call that X because I don't know what it is. Now again, TOA or the TOA. TOA means tangent equals opposite divided by adjacent or tangent equals opposite over adjacent. This one right here is, this C, this C stands for cosine. Cosine equals adjacent divided by hypotenuse. This one right here is the so part. S stands for sine. Sine equals opposite divided by hypotenuse. All right? So we got so, ka, to. All right? Now, this is my equation. All right? Now, whenever I have a, a value, so tangent of 61. So I need to calculate tangent of 61. Now, it just so happens that I already did this work. So I know the tangent of 61. I got that written down. So the tangent of 61, if we could just take out our scientific calculator or your graphing calculator or your iPhone calculator or your Android, if you like green text messages, um, if they have a calculator app on it, that's cool. But you take your calculator out and you find out the tangent of 61, right? The tangent of 61 in your calculator is 1.8040 or 1.8040, or 1 which equals 15 over X. Right? 1.8040 equals 15 over X. All right. Now, I'm trying to solve for X. So there's a trick that I know whenever I have a setup like this. I have a number is equal to a fraction and the variable is in the denominator. I basically can, I basically can just have this X and this number switch places, which gives me X equals 15 divided by 1.8040. Now, before I go on, let me talk a little bit about real quick about why I can do that and how I know that that's going to work. This is basically a proportion. You have a fraction on the right side and you have a fraction over here. You might, say, you might be saying to yourself, well, but there's no fraction bar. But all I have to do is just draw a line and a 1, and that automatically makes that a fraction, 1.8040 over 1. If I was to cross multiply in diagonals, then I would have 1.8040x is equal to 15. If 1.8040x was equal to 15, how do I solve for x? I would have to divide both sides by 1.8040. So then I, that means I would do 1.8040x divided by 1 divided by 1.8040 divided by 1.8040, I'm sorry, which would leave me with just x on the left side. 
Then on the right side, I'll be doing 15 divided by 1.8040 also, right? So now, when you do this calculation, you end up with x equals 8.3. So that's the length of AB. AB is 8.3. All right? So let's throw our answer up here. 8.3 units. So we just used the, tr the tangent function to figure out the missing side of this triangle. Now, you might be wondering, well, what does sine really mean? What does cosine really mean? What does tangent mean? Tangent represents a relationship between two sides of a triangle. All right? When we're dealing with right triangle trigonometry. There are other meaning, meanings of the word tangent, but in this context, tangent represents the relationship between the opposite side from an angle in a right triangle divided by, or the value of the opposite side in a right triangle from an angle divided by the adjacent side. That's what tangent represents, and that's what it means. Side represents the relationship between the opposite side from an angle divided by the hypotenuse of the right triangle. Cosine means the adjacent side from an angle compared to an angle divided by the hypotenuse of the right triangle. So you see the sine function and the cosine function deal with, deal with the hypotenuse. Tangent don't deal with the hypotenuse. Tangent deals with the opposite side and the adjacent side, like we just used in number one. All right, so number one, the length of side AB is 8.3. All right, let's jump down here to number two. So in number two, we're looking for angle C, all right? Now, where is angle C? Look on our triangle. We got point A, we got point B, we got point C. So that would make this right here angle C. All right? So we got that. We got angle C right there. Now, we're looking for an angle now. Last time, we were looking for the length of a side. Now, we're looking for an angle. But we can still use the same formulas. But we first have to figure out what information we know and what information we're looking for. So, we're looking for angle C. And in, in relation to angle C, we know the hypotenuse of this triangle, and we know the opposite side of this triangle. The opposite side, or the opposite side from this angle, I should say. The opposite side from the angle C is AB. The hypotenuse of this whole triangle is AC. Now, you always have to ask yourself, based upon the information that you know, you have an angle, you know the opposite side, and you know the hypotenuse. Which one of these three trig ratios deals with or includes the opposite side and the hypotenuse? Not this one, because this doesn't deal with the hypotenuse. Not this one, because this deals with the adjacent side. Not the opposite side. We deal with this one. We're going to deal with so. The sine function. Because the sine function is equal to the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. So this is how I'm going to set my equation up. Check this out. I'm going to do sine of C is equal to the opposite side from C, which is AB. And I'm going to just give you the general formula, right? I didn't do that in this first problem, but I should have, but I'm going to do it in number two. So sine of the angle C is equal to the opposite side, which is right here, which is AB from point A to point B. It's called AB, divided by the hypotenuse of the whole triangle. And remember what I said, the hypotenuse is the side that's across from the right angle. This is the right angle, this is the hypotenuse. This is the right angle, this is the hypotenuse. It's across from it. That's the hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse is point, I'm sorry, it's segment AC or leg AC. So that's our general formula, right? So then what we do next, we don't know what C is. We don't know that. But we do know what AB is, that's 9. And we know what AC is, that's 15. So now we're just going to do some, you know, we're going to play... You know, fill in the blanks, or we're going to replace things, or we're going to play substitution. That's what we're going to do. We don't know what C is, so we keep sine of C, right? We keep our equal sign. We know what AB is, so I'm going to replace the AB with a 9. And I'm going to replace the AC with a 15. So now we're getting somewhere. Now, I need to simplify this and turn this into a decimal. And I need to round it to four decimal places. That's my rule. I like to round trig ratios to four decimal places, at least. All right? So now I'm going to do sine of C. And now 9 fifteenths, we shouldn't need a calculator for that. Right? Because we know that 9 out of 15, if we were to reduce this fraction, 
the greatest common factor of 9 and 15 is 3. 9 divided by 3 is 3, and 15 divided by 3 is 5. So we got 3 fifths. And if we memorize some of our fraction equivalents, right, 3 fifths is the same thing as 0 0.6. 3 fifths is the same thing as 0 0.6. So remember I said I like to round my trig ratios to at least four spaces? But if I do that, I'm only going to just write placeholders. Three zeros after the six. I don't really need those. Let me make this look more like a C. Capital C. All right, cool. So now, sine of C equals 0.6. Now, my goal is to solve for this angle C right here. So I need to get rid of something. I need to get rid of the sine, right? The sine function. Now, how do I do that? I can't just divide it, even though this looks like multiplication. It's not multiplication. This is the sine of C. This, is not, this does not mean you multiply sine by the angle C. That's not what that means. So what I need to do is I need to do something called take the inverse of sine. I need to take the inverse of sine. And if I do it on the left side, I need to also do it on the right side. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to do inverse sine, which is kind of like that day we was talking about inverse functions and finding the inverses of functions. We use an exponent negative 1, even though it's not really the exponent negative 1, but we just use that notation to represent the inverse sine. And we would do the same thing if we were doing the inverse cosine or the inverse tangent. We would do the same thing. So I got inverse sine of the sine of C. And then on the right-hand side, I got inverse sine of 0 0.6. Because remember what we talked about, we talked about mathematics and algebra is all about balance. So if I do something on the left side of the equation, I have to also do the same thing on the right side of the equation. Right Now, what does this enable me to do on the left side, or what does this create on the left side? These signs cancel each other out, leaving me with just angle C on the left side. Then on the right side, again, this is a calculator problem, right? Unless we deal with the unit circle from trigonometry and you have that information memorized, right? If In that case, it's fine. You might already know. Um, the inverse sign of 0.6, I use a calculator for this. Forgive me. Right? I don't have all that memorized. So the inverse sine of 0.6, if you input that on your, on your scientific calculator or your graphing calculator, will give you 36.87 degrees. Or you might just want to round that. You might want to round that up to 37 degrees. Put the squiggly lines because it's not exact. It's an approximation. Right? So that means that angle C is 37 degrees. And of course, this is just random, just because I thought of it just now. If I wanted to know the, the measurement of the third angle in the triangle, I know that based on the triangle sum theorem, all three angles of any triangle must add up to what number? 180. So this 90 plus this 37 is going to give me 127 degrees. So these two angles make up 127 out of the 180, right? So this third angle must be 53 degrees because that's what you get when you do 180 minus 127 53 degrees i tell my students all the time like don't get all caught up in like the geometry aspect think of it as money right if you had to figure out the third leg or the third angle in a triangle and you know you got let's say you know you need 180 dollars for a purchase whatever you're trying to buy whatever you're trying to get into that's your business right you need 180 dollars you know you got 90 dollars already in your pocket right now and you know somebody said they was about to give you $37, right? The question for you is, how much more money do you still need to get to that $180? You would still need $53. So you do the same thing with this triangle. You figure out the, the measurement of the angle the same exact way. The same way you would do, all right, well, if I know I need $180, and boom, somebody I already got $90, so that takes away $90, so I, I still need $90. And then somebody came through and said, all right, well, I'll let you hold this $37 I got on me right now, $90 minus $37, you just do the subtraction. 90 minus 30 gives you 60. 60 minus 7 gives you 53. You know you still need $53. This is something else I wanted to throw out there. All right, so that's number two. Now, take a look at number three. Number three, we're going to find a couple things. We're going to find the angle, angle C right here, and we're going to find the length of AB. All right? So now, looking for angle C. If angle C, if I don't know angle C, I'm going to put the question mark right there. I look at what information I know already in this triangle, right? Based on what's written up here. 
I'm looking at what information is written. So I know what the adjacent side is to this angle, and I know the hypotenuse of this whole triangle. Because again, the hypotenuse is across from the right angle. That's my right angle, that's my hypotenuse, right? So ask my, I ask myself, what ratio deals with the adjacent side from an angle and the hypotenuse? Cut. Cosine equals adjacent divided by hypotenuse. Memorize Sokotoa. Do yourself a favor. Memorize Sokotoa. And do a bunch of these problems so you'll understand how to use Sokotoa. All right? So now, we got cosine of C is equal to, and I'm going to just go straight to the numbers. I'm not going to put the, the names of the legs in this time. Right? Cosine of C is equal to the adjacent side, which is 15, divided by the hypotenuse, which is 17. So now I need to do the same thing that I did in number two. I need to convert this to a trig ratio or divide this numerator by this denominator to get a decimal, round it to four decimal places, right? So 15 divided by 17, and I need my calculator. Cosine of C is equal to I believe that's 0.8823. And you're, uh, yeah, I thought I didn't need my calculator, but I do. So let me go grab that. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. I got my tools. I wasn't prepared. Shame on me. All right, but I'm prepared now. All right, so dig it. So 15 divided by 17, actually, let me let me adjust this because this should actually be 0.8824 because you would have had, because on the calculator, it gives us 0.88235. So that makes the three go up and become a four when we do our rounding. All right, so now I need to do the inverse cosine. So inverse cosine of cosine of C is equal to inverse cosine of 0.8824, all right? These cosines cancel out, leaving us with just angle C. And then on our calculator, we do inverse cosine 0.8824, which is 28 degrees. So that means that this angle is 28 degrees, all right? And if you don't already, follow me on Instagram at all this math. Anyway, all right, so angle C is 28 degrees. Now, one more thing I got to find. I got to find AB. Now, there's a couple ways I could do this. I know this is a right triangle, right? I know that right triangles deal with, sometimes they have sides that are called Pythagorean triples, all right, that we can memorize. So this happens to be a part of a Pythagorean triple, this 15 and this 17. I know one of the Pythagorean triples is 8, 15, and 17. So that means that this side has to be 8. You know why? Because, again, the so-called Pythagorean theorem, so-called because Pythagoras was Greek, but he went to ancient Kemet, which is in Africa, which is modern-day Egypt, which is where our ancestors were, right? And they, he learned this geometry from them. But the Greeks take credit for it and tell people that, you know, or insinuate that it comes from them. But anyway, we got into that before. We can get into that another time, too. But at any rate, the so-called Pythagorean theorem says this. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. So that means that one of the legs squared plus another leg squared equals the hypotenuse squared. So we're saying A squared plus this 15, because that's the other leg. 17 is the hypotenuse because it's across from the right angle. Is equal to 17 squared, Right? So we got a squared plus 225 is equal to 289. And then we got a squared is equal to 289 minus 225. So a squared is equal to, and what's 289 minus 225? So if I broke that up to 230, that's going to give me 59. 59 plus 5 is 64. So a squared is equal to 64. If I take the square root of left side and right side, I'd have a is equal to 8. So therefore, AB must be 8 according to the Pythagorean theorem. 
Or I could have had the Pythagorean triples memorized. Right? So that's another way I could have got that. Or I could use one of the trig ratios. I could still use one of the trig ratios, right? So one of the trig ratios, if I know this angle is 28, and I know, let's say I'm looking for the opposite. So this would be the opposite side from this angle, right? The opposite side. And I know the hypotenuse and I know the adjacent side. I got some choices now. So I could use opposite over hypotenuse, which will be sine, or I could use opposite over adjacent, which will be tangent. If you ever find yourself in that situation where you have options about which trig ratio to use, you can use either one. It doesn't matter. You'll still get the correct answer. It doesn't matter which ratio you use, as long as you do the mathematics correctly. I'm going to use sine. No real reason. I just feel like using sine. So sine of 28 is equal to, so the sine of this angle is equal to the opposite side, which is AB, which we're going to call X, because I'm going to act like I don't know that this, I don't know that the answer is already A. So we got X over the hypotenuse, which is 17. So let's calculate sine of 28. So the sine of 28, go back to my calculator. Sine of 28 gives us I don't want to run into Kwame's name, because Kwame is legendary. 0.4695 is equal to x over 17, right? Now I want to solve for x. So really all I need to do is get rid of this 17. So really all I have to do, the opposite of dividing by 17 is multiplying by 17. So I'm going to multiply by 17 on the right side. And multiply by 17 on the left side. So I'll go times 17 and times 17. Right? And I get something like 7.98 equals x. Now you might be wondering, like, oh, but I thought you said it was 8 though. It's not exactly 8. This is a rounding difference, right? 7.98, we can round that up to 8, right? If somebody say you go in the store and something costs $7.98, you basically know in your mind that it's basically $8. It's only two pennies off or two hundredths off from 8. All right, so we just figured out how to find this side of the triangle three different ways. Memorizing the Pythagorean triples, using the so-called Pythagorean theorem, and also using the trig ratio. And we could have used a different trig ratio, but I just chose to use sine. We could have used tangent too, you know? So anyway, this is a little bit about uh, trigonometry, a little bit about Sokotoa. It gets deeper than that, but I just wanted to give like kind of an overview, just do a few like light examples to show how we use Sokotoa in doing some of these problems. And one day we're actually gonna do some videos on some actual word problems. I know people always talk about, when am I gonna use this in real life? When are we gonna use this? Well, you know. It's plenty of word problems. There are word problems for days that we can do that employ the trigonometric ratios. All right. So, again, thank you for tuning in. If you have problems that you need worked out, send a DM to the All This Math DM. <laughs> send a DM to the All This Math DM, and your problem might end up on this board. Peace.